Namaste. India, the China's teacher. India was China's teacher. Cultural bonds existed between the two Asian giants. They could be traced from the times of Mahabharata and later consolidated through the spread of Buddhism. Lin Newton, the author of The Wisdom of China and India, says, India was China's teacher in religion and imaginative literature and the world's teacher in trigonometry, quadratic equations, grammar, phonetics, Arabian nights, animal fables, chess, as well as philosophy and that she inspired Boccaccio, Giotte, Herder, Schopenhauer, Emerson and probably also the Aesop. Sir William Jones came to India as a judge of the Supreme Court of at Calcutta. He pioneered Sanskrit studies. His administration for Indian thought and culture was almost limitless. He always said, says that the Chinese assessed their Hindu origin. He, she, was a Chinese philosopher in the Republican China. He was an ambassador to the US and chancellor of Peking University. India conquered and dominated China culturally for 2000 years without ever having to send a single soldier across a border. The Sanskrit name for China is Sina. Sir Rene Grosset, a French historian, says the name China comes from the Sanskrit name for the regions of the East. Many other scholars clearly mention that the Chinese word for lion, Xi, used long before the Qin dynasty, was derived from the Sanskrit word Simha and that Greek word of China, Sinista, used by some late, later writers, appears to be the derivative of the Sanskrit Chinastana. Both Arnold Toynbee and Sir L. Wole speak of a ready man, ready-made culture coming, coming to China. That was the Vedic culture of India. It is well known that in the Mahabharata, the Sinas appear with, with the Kiritas among the um, armies of King Bhagadatta of Prajyotista or Assam. In the, in the Sabaparva, this king is described as surrounded by the Kiritas and the Sinas. In Bhishma Parva, the corpse of Bhag Bhagadatta consisting of the Kir Kritas China, Sina's reference in Mahabharata. It is well known that in the Mahabharata, the Sinas the appear with the Kiratas among the armies of King Bhagadatta of Pragyotista or Assam. In the Sabha Parva, this king is described as surrounded by the Kiratas and the Sinas. In this Bhishma Parva, the corpse of Bhagadatta consisting of Kirtas and the Sinas of yellow color appeared like a forest of Karnikaras. In the Vana Parva of the Mahabharata, the Pandava brothers are said to have crossed the country of the Chinas in course of their trek through the Himalayan territory north of Badri and reached the realm of the Kiritas King Sabahu. The Sinas are brought into intimate relationship with the Himalayan people in the Sabha Parva also. In the Nagarjuna Konda inscription of Virapurusadatta, China is said to be lying in, in the Himalayas beyond Silata or Kirata. These references to the proximity of China to the Himalayas region, inhibited the, by the Kiratas, show, show that there, there were regular routes through the tibeto burman territories along which the Indian could reach China. Trade and Commerce India has contact with China from, uh, from the early period through three routes. One way, though the Central Asian region, the second was through Yunnan and Burma. The third way was set by the Sea South Indian posts. The chronicle Sung Chu states that all the precious things of land and water came from India. Gems made by rhinoceros horns and kingfisher stones, serpents pearls and objetos cloths and innumer innumerable varieties of those curiosities were imported from China from India. Kalidasa mentions this silk fabric as one of the most fashionable textiles among the richer sections of society. Silk and silk products were also in much demand luxury articles even in the region of Harshavadana. Literature Sanskrit in influenced the Chinese literature in many ways. Many Buddhistic works have been translated into Chinese. Phrases and words coined by Buddhist scholars enrich the, enrich the 
Chinese vocabulary by more than 35,000 words. Sanskrit dramas like Shakuntala, which were translated into Chinese, had become popular dramas. Art Indian art also reached China, mainly through Central Asia, although some words of Buddhist art came by sea. Monks and their retinues and traders bought Buddha statues, model of Hindu temples and other subjects of art to China. Fazan made drawings of images whilst uh, at Thermopyty. Husen Sang returned with several golden and sandalwood figures of, for, of the Buddha and Hulin with a model of Nalanda Mahavira, Wang Huanse, who was sent to India several times several time, collected many drawings of Buddhist images, including a copy of the Buddha image at Bodhagaya. This was deposited at the imperial palace and it served as a model of the image in Kognaisi temple. Indian music was also popular in China. The emperor Kaso tried unsuc unsuccessfully to proscribe it by an imperial decree. His successor Yang Ti was also very fond of Indian music. In Chinese annals, references are, to, are found to visit, visiting Indian musicians who reached China from India, Kucha, Khazar, Bukhara and Cambodia. A major Buddhist influence on Chinese science was in scientific thought itself. Buddhist concepts such as the infinity of space and time and plurality of words of some time cycles or Hindu kalpas had a simultaneously effect on Chinese inquiry broadening the Chinese outlook and better equipping it to investigate scientific problems. Tantric Buddhism reached China in the 18th century and the greatest Chinese astronomer and mathematician of his time, Hizing, was a Tantric Buddhist monk. While the work of Indian mathematicians were carried westward by the Arabs and transmitted to Europe, it was taken eastward by Indian Buddhist monks and professional mathematicians. In the annals of the Sui dynasty, numerous Chinese translations of Indian mathematical and astronomical work are mentioned, such as Polomen Sofana, Hindu arithmetical and Polomen Suhan King. These dates from 2600 BC, a complete cycle takes 60 years, divided into 12 years elements. Each of these 12 years is named as an animal favored by the Buddha. Thank you.